Sarah, would you mind seeing if there's any way to try to get in touch with Maria? Yep, I'll go um, give her a call now. Okay. Because uh, what I'll do is, is I'll start um, giving some instructions, and then hopefully by that time uh, we'll be able to, to start. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name uh, is Rhonda Seidman Carlson, and I'm the past president uh, of RNO and the current chair of our provincial nominating uh, committee. And I will be moderating uh, the webinars uh, uh, for all three of our webinars. Is that Maria who's joined? No, okay, so um, the structure of the webinars is as follows. We will hear from the candidates grouped by the position they are running for. Each candidate will have five minutes for opening remarks, by, followed by a 10-minute question and answer period for both candidates. Um, you will see a, a photograph of each candidate as they are speaking. And unless other materials have been provided, um, uh, such as a, a, um, a a PowerPoint. Uh, none, no other materials were mandatory. They were all optional, so it really depended uh, if, if any of the candidates brought any material with them. Um, if you would like to ask a question of a candidate, there's two ways you could do that. Uh, I will open the floor for questions, and you can verbally address your question to the candidates using the phone. But if I ask you please to first say your name in case there are multiple questions, and I would like to then address them in order as best I can. You can also submit your question by typing in the chat box, and you'll find that at the bottom right of your screen. Type in your question there, and please state the MAL position to whom your question is directed. And then please don't treat trick questions as you think of them. So during the presentation, when the candidate, if there is a question you think about, please type it in. And then um, both candidates um, for each position will have an opportunity to address each question. And I will do that in rotating order so that uh, not everybody will go first and not everybody will go second. Uh, candidates will have one minute to respond to a question directed at them. Um, and Sarah from Home Office will uh, announce when they have 15 seconds left to speak. Um, and if they go over this time, I will be asking you uh, to, to stop. Any questions from our candidates? No, we're good. No, that's uh, Sarah, we, have you been able to get Maria? Hi, Rana, it's Josephine. Sarah's just still trying to connect with her. Okay. What I'm going to do, Josephine, is I'm going to start with uh, with the other positions because um, the the uh, Maria's in the uh, MAL uh, clinical practice, and uh, it's the third one. So I first want, I want to talk about um, uh, earlier uh, today. We received uh, information from Carol Dusek, who unfortunately had to withdraw her candidacy for MAL administration. And because of that, Rhonda Crocker Ellicott is uh, acclaimed into the position of MAL administration. So on this webinar and the other two webinars, we will only be talking about the two MAL positions where there are uh, two candidates running. So first of all, we will be uh, going forward for the MAL uh, education. Um, and our first candidate, uh, Elizabeth, you have uh, five minutes, uh, we have ten minutes in total, uh, to, uh, to, to give uh, your presentation. Elizabeth, are you okay? Ready? I am ready. Thank, thank you. you, Elizabeth. Okay. Um, thank you very much for, for those folks who have signed on to ask questions about the candidates who are seeking election to the Board of Directors for RNAO. I can tell people from previous experience being on the board and again this time that it's really truly a privilege to be able to represent um, some aspect, a domain of practice for nursing on the board of RNAO and it's a really great learning experience. So I, I'm just thrilled that we have candidates up for election. Um, I guess um, in terms of who I am, my background is uh, strongly in education and practice both. Clinical experiences are quite varied, but I have had um, sort of equal opportunities to engage in clinical education, um, both from a practice perspective and an academic perspective, and then some and then academic um, background at McMaster University of Toronto, and now I teach in the collaborative baccalaureate program at um, uh, with Brock at the Loyalist College site in Belleville. And for the last year, I've been the replacement member at large education on the board of directors because the previous incumbent um, had to leave the position. And in the past year, I'm really excited with the progress that the committee has 
the uh, Member Education Committee um, has made under the auspices of um, a new chair and uh, the assistance of Anastasia Harapal at Home Office. So I'd just kind of like to speak to some of the issues that I think the committee has identified um, as educational issues that we as nurses need to be attentive to right now. And I would um, really welcome the opportunity to continue for at least another year, depending on how the governance votes go, um, in this role just to be able to complete some of the initiatives that we were able to get off the ground this year. It's been very exciting and I, as I said, I'd really like the opportunity to see them through to completion. So we obviously had a lot of uh, discussion this year around the NCLEX exam and, um, for registration for new graduates. And I think that some of the discussion that I feel strongly about myself there, first off, is that we should be concerned about the way that the NCLEX has, um, has evolved and the, the outcome of it with some of our new grads certainly feeling unprepared. Um, but I think that many new grads have done better than they thought that they were going to. And I think it's really important that we continue to address that as nurse educators um, because none of us really want to teach to an exam. We want our new graduates to be well prepared, not just for the world that they're graduating into, but for many, many years to come. And we have to make sure that we have a registration exam that meets the need of our new graduates and the needs of our healthcare system. So that's something that the Member Education Committee under whoever ends up being the member at large um, would, I hope, would continue to monitor is the, the future of the registration exams, whether we continue with what we have or whether there will be something different. And I know that Home Office is working and very closely in monitoring that with us as well. Some of the other issues that we're facing in nursing education, though, I, I, we can't just focus on one thing. There are some really other broad issues, um, certainly clinical placements for um, our students and um, particularly pre-grad experiences for nursing students have shrunk in the last couple of years with regards to RN replacement So it's um, and budget constraints. So I think it's really quite critical that RNAO has um, maintained uh, the initiative that they have advocating um, for registered nurse positions and against RN replacement. It has a tremendous impact, um, sort of backed up the system into education because we can't always offer our undergraduate students the quality kinds of placements that they need. And it's really important that, um, that the member at large for education continues to support RNAO and its efforts to, to do that um, and maintain um, as many registered nurse positions, not just for quality of care, but for quality of educational opportunities as well. Um, these issues are particularly rampant in some of the smaller areas, rural areas. I know that um, Lakehead up north has had significant challenges with some of their opportunities and I know that we do in my area as well with some of the, uh, the stuff that's gone on with RN replacement. And then we can't forget that um, nurses who are working have lost, due to budget constraints as well, lost opportunities for educational um, enhancement, for keeping up and for um, acquiring new knowledge and skills because there just isn't any money left over for education. Um, institutional budgets get cut and the first thing that happens is that the, the education um, resources are often reduced as well and oh, yeah. nurses are left to fend for themselves. Okay, I'm almost done. Um, so um, given that there's still a lot of work to be done. I have a pet project and that's um, student poverty in uh, amongst the nursing students in particular. And um, that's another issue that we have tabled for future discussion with the member education committee. So I'm asking for an extension of my term so that we can continue to, uh, to work on some of these issues and, uh, and hopefully help home office bring some resolution. Thanks. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, Tammy, uh, this is Tammy McParland, and uh, Tammy, can you please um, take your five minutes and present yourself uh, to the listeners? Yes, absolutely. Thanks so much for this. Um, my name, as you know, uh, you can see is Tammy McParland, and um, I live in North Bay, Ontario, which is really only three and a half hours north of Toronto, so it's not that far. And I want to sort of share with you that how I came about standing for this position. 
And in fact, I was nominated by a peer at Nipissing University where I'm an associate professor. And at the time when she nominated me, I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting myself into. And I have to be honest and say I still don't know, but I've done a lot of reflection and I've actually come to really appreciate the confidence that she has invested in me in, in nominating me for this position. And as I've gone through the whole process, uh, I've really understood and got uh, I've started to see what RNAO is capable of and the power that does exist with the organization. So that's been quite enlightening for me. I am um, not uh, an Ontario born nurse. I was uh, born in Nova Scotia. I graduated from the Halifax Infirmary School of Nursing, which was a hospital based um, institution back in 1980. So I've been around a long time. I've seen nursing issues come and go, um, seen the pendulum swing back and forth. I have gone on in my education and I have um, just recently, last year, successfully defended my PhD in education and it is a nursing education specialty, specialization where I did my thesis on simulation in nursing education. And I'm presently comp uh, completing the CASM Nurse Educator Certificate. So I, I've, I have a lot of, of knowledge about education and I, that speaks to the passion that I carry for this particular aspect of nursing practice. And so when this opportunity was afforded to me, I was I was really quite, um, I was, I'm pretty humbled and I'm, I'm pretty excited to be able to be given the opportunity to even speak to what I think uh, I could bring to the position. So that brings me to why did I want this role and I, I, chose this, I chose to stand, to allow my name to stand is because I want to challenge myself a little bit, step out of my comfort zone. I want to give back to my profession. Um, as a teacher I find, you know, there's lots of things that I'm, faced with every day with my students and then when you think about this and reflect on it, you definitely see the greater impact on the profession. So I think in the role of the MAL at education, in education with the Board of Directors, on the RNAO I, I will bring, um, it's going to be a two-way street. I will bring my perspective and I will hopefully help to uh, um, bring the perspective of the RNAO back to um, my students and help them to be encouraged about the profession that they're becoming a member of. Um, in terms of my education, I have, uh, or my experience, I have um, have clinical experience, much like Elizabeth, across the gamut. I've worked in rural and northern health. I was in Moose Factory for two years early in my uh, profession. I've worked um, CCU, ICU, new babies, uh, maternal child. I've worked uh, telehealth. I was. Um, the person, one of the managers who helped to bring Telehealth Ontario to Ontario and I was their education manager for a few years in early 2000s. I have worked with the VON in Aboriginal um, community partners or community health aides. I helped develop a program with the national, the VON nationally to do that. And um, then of course, as I mentioned, I've taught uh, academically in the college system and in the university system. So what do I see as being the priorities for the member at large position? Um, I have to say I agree with Elizabeth on a couple of those, one which is the NCLEX. And um, I think the NCLEX may be here to stay, uh, it, but I hope hopefully it will change somewhat and how it's delivered and it will change in maybe what is on it. Um, and I think that's a huge role for education. Um, I also agree with advocating for the registered nurse positions because North Bay has been hit particularly hard by RN cutbacks and that has totally impacted on our ability to provide placements for our students and it is becoming a huge issue in that, you know, even even the seats that are being allowed for, for nursing programs may have to be cut back because there are no places for the student nurses to go. Uh, simulation has been brought forward as a, a possible um, adjunct to help solve that, but it's not to be all and end all, and we have to do more research to uh, establish that. Um, and I also, um, if you know, I talked about um, educational activities for those who are not in large centers, and I think that uh, Elizabeth also mentioned that that it's also you know it, for RNs to continue to be part of self lifelong learning, which is what we as nurses should be doing. It's very difficult when you live in the north or you live in a rural area, even in a place like North Bay, which is, you wouldn't think is that far from Toronto or from the bigger centers, sometimes it's challenging to bring um, another uh, 15 second notice. Patient. So that's sort of where I come from and of course the um, last thing that I fully support is RN prescribing and that's going to be a whole other bag of tricks that we're going to have to, to look at and should be very exciting to bring that implementation about for 2020. And that's Thank it. You.
Thank you very much, Tammy. Um, I'm going to open it up now for a question and answer period. We will have 10 minutes. And as I mentioned before, uh, you can either ask a question through the phone line or you can type in uh, your questions uh, using the chat box. Uh, is there anybody uh, on the phone who would like to ask a question? And if you do, please say your name first. Okay, Sarah, while we're waiting to see if anybody on the phone, are there any uh, written questions that you've received? No, we haven't received any just yet. Okay. Um, I'll ask again if there's anybody um, uh, on the phone who would like to ask a question of our two candidates. Okay, well, uh, we will, uh, we possibly will have time towards the end if anybody else thinks of some questions. Thank you very much, both Elizabeth Edwards and Tammy McFarland. I appreciate very much uh, your presentations and uh, your commitment to stand and, and run for this position. Uh, um, Sarah, were you able to find Maria? Um, we've been emailing. She's having some trouble connecting, so I'm still working with her, and maybe we should sh start with Cheryl. Okay, great. I, we will do so. Uh, Cheryl, uh, so our candidate, uh, Cheryl Yost, uh, will have five minutes to speak uh, around the MAL practice. Um, and Cheryl, are you okay to start? I sure am. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cheryl Yost, and I work in the, excuse my voice today, um, this really brings it home on how important our healthcare system is to us, because the last, since last week I've been in bed ill, uh, no fault of my own, it's just a fault of the overall process and not running fast enough to stay ahead of the illness. Anyway, I work in rural remote Ontario and that's in a nursing station uh, in our far north. And I always thought that Manitoulin Island or Sudbury was our north, but once you look at the map, it's much further than that. Mm -hmm. And so reality certainly hit me. I live in southern Ontario in Region 2 and work in Region 12. So that gives a, a cross-section there. As I listened to the presenters earlier in the cross-section, uh, I am so impressed with the quality of, of uh, what I'm hearing today. Um, I really feel that I'm well placed to continue to support the position as member at large because of the background that I have had, as well as what I'm doing at this point in time. Um, I really welcome the challenge, the opportunity, and the excitement of uh, where we've been and where we're headed to. One of the my colleagues gave me an email or sent an email through, and we had a, a lengthy discussion a few weeks ago about the hospital of the future, and this was actually looking at Women's College in Toronto and the new hospital that was um, uh, unveiled back in September, and now they're going to be doing um, tours in May, and I'm intrigued to see what can happen with that, but it really is the analogy that goes along with what we're doing through RNAO, what we're doing as nurses, and what we could do, and the possibilities are unlimited. It's looking at the system as in totally different way than what we've been used to. And even at the new positions that, or the new way that the board is looking at doing business, changing the configuration of the board, I really look at that and it's, you know, it's a little unnerving at times, but on the other hand is we need to make change to support change. And as I look at the possibility that this position will be in place for perhaps one year, um, we have so much to do, and yet there's ways of doing it as we move forward. As far as the what I bring to the table, and excuse my voice, what I bring to the table and to the overall process is I have worked in healthcare for over 30 years. I hate to say exactly because it would put an age to me, but on the other hand, it, I am full of excitement every time I think of where I've been and where we're, we are headed as far as nursing. So to look at empowering individuals and communities to really support their optimum health is really what I, my dream is, and to advocate for a system that will sustain in a different way. I have um, 
some passions within. I have a number of passions, but the ones that really pull me forward are looking at full scope of practice, and that's with RN prescribing that uh, we're hoping that's coming down the road, as well as service delivery models. We can't continue to work the way we are at the pace that we are expected to work and the, at the pace that we are expecting ourselves to work in the way that we've been doing for quite a number of years. So as I look at that, I also reflect on the issues that have been identified both um, regionally as well as provincially from the um, activities we've been doing within the Nursing Practice Council. Um, I, I'm really impressed with what I've seen in the last two years and the teamwork that has occurred with the group that is there now and what we're projecting for in the future. When I look at re the number one issue I see is replacing RNs, and that's something that is happening in a malignant way recently, and it's, it's probably due to continue unless we can put a major block in that and give some other opportunities for it to, excuse me, for it to, uh, to move forward. Not only that, looking at the environment, and it's not only in the environment within the workforce itself, within our work settings, but it's also looking at the environment outside of that, both for our personal and professional um, health. It's looking at the isolation that some nurses feel that they have, because even though they're working in a large center, they're working in an isolated way. And we need to really look at that closer. When I look at the professional development and I hear what was just presented from the two people prior to me, I mean, we have valuable resources. We've discussed that at our meetings, and we want to make sure that we can capitalize on the students, the new grads, as well as nurses that are, are lending into different um, career opportunities within the workforce itself. Fifteen. Um, sorry, fifteen. I, I really... Um, look at these issues and feel that we've got so much work to do and I really feel that we as a group can, can go forward with this and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Has Maria been able to sign in? No, she hasn't. Okay, she didn't, you didn't want to try to ask her just to just call in as I am? Um, that's what we're trying to do and I've, I've lost her so I'll let you know I'll send you an email if I can get a hold of her okay um, the, all right so uh, I will I will open up the uh, the questions uh, for Cheryl uh, and hopefully we can get Maria on the line um, uh, are there any questions for those who are on the phone uh, for Cheryl for the MAL uh, posi position for practice There have there been any written? No written questions yet. Um, no written questions. Um, so I, I think that um, uh, that we have um, uh, technical difficulties. We haven't been able to get Maria, um, and um, so uh, I just wanted uh, first of all to thank the people who've been on the line for participating uh, today and to thank uh, the members uh, for uh, being online and listening and hopefully um, a question will pop up uh, and uh, and in that vein I want to remind you that we have two more um, webinars scheduled. Uh, they're scheduled for Monday, April the 7th, uh, not the 7th, pardon me, Monday, April the 4th at 6 p.m. and Thursday, April the 7th at 2 p.m. So for those of you who have been listening today, if a question does arise, um, you can uh, sign in to one of those uh, those dates and ask your question then. Um, or if you know someone who will be listening in, uh, you can uh, pose your question through them. The also that you should know is that this webinar and our future two webinars will be archived on my RNAO. And you can find a link uh, to them on the elections page uh, when you go to RNAO's uh, webpage. Um, and also, uh, one member, one vote, will be open on Tuesday, April the 19th at noon, and end on Thursday, May the 5th at noon. Uh, and remember to vote. We have many uh, important uh, items, so we have these two positions. 
where we have candidates competing for the MAL position. We have the uh, issues around the board governance, um, and we, we have issues that is really important to get as many members as we can out and, and doing the vote. So again, I will remind you that it will open at noon on, on Tuesday, April the 19th, and will close on, at noon on Thursday, May the 5th. I'll ask one more time if we've been successful in getting Maria on the phone. No? Okay, well, I thank you all for being on the line. I, I thank our candidates very much for your time, and I thank those who are listening for taking the time to be part of this webinar. Thank you very much, and I will uh, be back with you uh, on Monday, April the 4th at 6 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Rhonda. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thanks.